Second, Vedic culture. During the last phase of Indus civilization, the speakers of Indus, Aryan language, arrived in India in tribes from northwest of India. These tribals set the foundation of Vedic culture. Rugveda is regarded as the first phase of Vedic period. This phase is in between 1500 BC to 1000 BC. The second phase is later Vedic period between 1000 BC to 600 BC. The people who enriched the Vedic culture are known as the Aryans. The Vedic culture is ancient and it has variety. This rich literature reveals the life of the Aryans. Vedic culture Vedic culture is very rich. The word Vedic is derived from the word Vid, means knowledge or wisdom. There is reference of nature gods, prayers to please them. These prayers and psalms contain the information about the Aryan religion, moral values, ethics, philosophy of life, political life, expansion of power, social structure, etc. The Vedic culture is revealed not only in Rugveda, Yajurveda, Samaveda and Atharvaveda but also through Brahmanas, Aranyakas, Upanishadas also. Rugveda. It is the first Akyak scripture of the Aryans. It is the Veda of praise. Rugveda contains the hymns praising the gods. There are ten books known as Mandalas and 1028 Suptas. Every stanza in Rukveda is also called as Rucha. Yajurveda The Yajurveda is the Veda of rituals. It contains the information about the mantra and its chanting during rituals. Samaveda The Samaveda is the Veda of melodies. It is about the singing of Rucha. Samaveda is regarded as the foundation of Indian classical music. Atharva Veda The Atharva Veda is a Veda of chants. In addition to the philosophy, there is description of medicinal plants, remedies on crisis, difficulties in life, etc. Vedas are supposed to be a divine creation. They are supposed to be written by divine will through the hands of sages. In short, the Aryan literature is a great contribution for the development of human culture. The social life in latter Vedic life witnessed a great change. Besides the three Varnas of Brahman, Kshatriya and Vaishya, the fourth class of vanquished people known as Shudras came into existence. This Varna system further degenerated into caste system. The function of Chaturvarna, that is, four classes. First, Brahman, to study and to teach Vedas and wisdom and perform rituals. Second, Kshatriya, acquisition of knowledge, administration, maintenance of law and order and protection of the kingdom. Third, Vaishya, farming, cattle breeding, trade business, etc. Fourth, Shudras. The non-Aryans assumed as Shudras were deprived of education. They had been allotted tasks in society. For accomplishment of the four Purshatas, namely Dharma, Artha, Kama and Moksha, the scheme of Atharva, that is, Stages of life was evolved. Brahmacharya Shram Pursue knowledge at Ashram Grihasthashram Getting married after completing the education and to earn wealth. Vanaprasthashrama Retirement from family life after 50 years and proceed to achieve salvation through meditation. Sanyashram 
attainment of salvation through contemplation and surrender. There was a little change in family system of the Aryans in latter Vedic period. The warlike conditions gave importance to value the boys to protect the race and property. In the course of time, the education of the women was disregarded. However, there were some exceptions like Gargi, Maitreyi, who were highly educated women. Third, Religious Ideas Vedic Religion The early Aryans were the worshippers of nature and natural forces. In Rugveda, the universe has been divided into three forces. Those are Earth, Space and Orbit. There were 11 deities in each group, altogether 33 deities. They are as follows. First, Deities on the Earth The Earth, Fire, Brahaspasti and Som, etc. Second, Deities in Space Indra, Rudra, Varun, that is, Rain Air, that is, Marut Option, Marut, etc. Third, Deities in the Orbit Sun, Usha, Vishnu, Moon etc. The chief deities of the Aryans were the sun, Indra, Varun, Usha, that is, female god, and Rudra. Thus, various natural forces were worshipped by the Aryans. The Aryans never worshipped the idols. They believed in rules of nature and its control over the universe. The moral order of the nature was called as Ruta. Ekam Sat was the religious principle of the Aryans. It implies that the universe is nothing but a manifestation of the one God who is the creator of the universe. The different ways of worshipping the deities finally led to the one God, Almighty. This was the chief principle of Vedic religion. The Aryans' ideas of religion developed the religious harmony in the society. Almighty God is the creator of the universe. The Aryans gave importance to ritual in order to please the natural forces and to have the blessings of the God. As the flames of fire go up in the sky and disappear, the fire became the God of oblation. The Aryans offered milk, butter, food grains to the fire in rituals. They believed that the offerings would bring happiness, prosperity, good health and protection from the enemies. The rites and rituals got an upper hand in the latter Vedic period. The colossus of the Brahmans who performed the ritual was increased. The traditions of sacrifice of animals began. Religious activities of rites and rituals increased. There was a revolt against all this. The caste system produced social inequality. The people's morality and good conduct disappeared. The great philosophers like Charvak, Kapil advocated rationalism and set foundations of ideology of social philosophy. Aryans, the cultural life the Aryans were using the cotton and woolen clothes. They designed embroidery on their clothes. The women had deep fascination of ornaments and cosmetics. They wore the jewelry made from gold, silver, ivory, necklace, garlands, etc. The men also wore jewelry. The necklace called Nishka was very popular. Both men and women were conscious about their hairstyle. They used to beautify themselves with scented cosmetics, powders, coal, mehndi, etc. The Aryans were interested in singing, dancing, playing games like dice, etc. Samaveda means study of music. The Veena, Mrudung, 
flute, a conch, and cymbals were the chief musical instruments of the Aryans. The Vedic Aryans participated in the sports like athletics. Hunting was treated as a game. The Aryan Settlements There are differences of opinions among the historians about the origin of the Aryans. An inscription discovered at Bogeskoi, Asia Minor in 1400 BC, has the reference of Rugveda and its gods, Indra, Mitra, Varun, etc. Therefore, Asia Minor is regarded as the origin of the Aryans. The early Vedic Aryans had settled in the valleys of Sindhu, Jalam, Chenap, Ravi, Bees, Sutlej, and Saraswati, defunct river, rivers in the northwest of Indian subcontinent. The Aryans called this fertile region as Sapta Sindhu, that is, the land of seven rivers. Later, the Aryans moved to the east towards the river Ganga and Yamuna. The Aryans called this region as Madhadesh, Middle Country. Aryans' Social Life The Aryan society was scattered in rural area. They lived in simple houses built of wood with thatched roofs. The diet of the Aryans included milk, curd, butter, fruits, vegetables and meat. The society fulfilled its needs by cooperating with each other. The head of the village was called as Gramini. The Aryan girls had the liberty to select their partners in spite of patriarchal families. The senior most male member was the head of the family. He was addressed as Grahapati. Women like Vishwavava, Goshla existed during Rigveda. The scholarly women were known as Brahmavadini. During Rigveda, the Varna system was flexible and it was based on the occupation of the people. Aryans Rule Administration Initially, the Aryans lived in tribes. They left the tribal life as they settled themselves in the fertile valleys of Sapta Sindhu, Ganga, Yamuna with abundant water. The other supplementary means for cattle breeding and farming attracted them towards stability in life. At the beginning, the Aryans had to fight with the non-Aryans as well as other Aryan tribes for the livestock and acquisition of the land. The Aryan institution of family gave birth to monarchy. Many families came together to form a village. A wish was a group of many villages. Various wish formed the jan, that is, the state. The chief of the state was called as Rajan or king. The people used to select a mighty and diplomatic person as their king. The king had to take an oath of his loyalty for the state. His first duty was to protect his people from the outside tribes. The unfaithful king was dethroned or killed. To control the monarchy, there were two institutions, Sabha and Samiti. These institutions became insignificant in latter Vedic period and the kingship became hereditary. Some of the ancient states were republic and some were monarchist. In the history of ancient India, the political ambitions arose from 16 Mahajanpad that brought forward the powerful kingdoms of Maurya, Gupta and Harsha, etc. Aryans' Economical Life The Aryans were living in the fertile regions of Saptasindhu. In the beginning, cattle breeding was their main occupation. It was the base of their economical life. 
when the Aryans settled themselves in the valleys of Indus and Yamuna, agriculture became their main occupation. They cultivated wheat, rice, barley, sugarcane, mustard, cotton, etc. They started using coins, nishka, as a currency for exchange. The quantity of cows decided the economical status of the family. The farmers paid one-sixth of their income as a tax to the king. There was a drastic change in the economical life of the Aryans in latter Vedic period. The use of iron plough increased the agricultural income. The iron was used in large scale for chariots, bullock carts, ships, weapons, etc. The standard of living improved due to progress in agriculture. There was remarkable development in trade business. There was emergence of small scale and cottage industry, which gave rise to the workers like carpenters, blacksmith, potters, goldsmith, weavers, painters, etc. These craftsmen established their organizations, which were further known as class. The chief of the class was called as Shureshti, a leader. The Aryans started their business in country and abroad. They formed their traders' union. There was enormous progress in trade during Mahajan Pad period. Jainism The word Jain has its origin in the word Jinnah. Jinnah means conqueror. Conqueror of all senses. There were 24 Tirthankars according to the Jain literature. Rushabdeo was the first and Parshvanatha was the 23rd Tirthankar. Mahavir Vardaman was the 24th Tirthankar. Parshvanath Jain prophet Parshvanath was a son of King Asvesana of Banaras. After a deep penance, he acquired the spiritual knowledge. He emphasized the principles of Satya, that is, truth, Ahimsa, non-violence, Asteya, non-grabbing, and Aparigraha, non-possession. The threefold path, Triratnas. Option, Triratnas. The essence of the preaching in Jain religion is three ratnas. Option. The essence of the preaching in Jain religion is three ratnas. First, Samyak Darshan, right belief. To have faith in Jain philosophy. Second, Samyak Dhyan, right knowledge. One must have proper knowledge about the actual nature of the world and about self. Samyak Charitra Option Samyak Charitra Right Conduct One must observe the five rules of Jainism. Great significance is given to one's conduct in the observance of this threefold path. Failure in the observance of these rules creates destruction in the social health and human grief. So the Jain people are very strict about their ethics. Mahavira had laid down the four rules for a Shravaka, that is, householder. They are Ahimsa, non-violence, Satya, truth, Asteya, non-grabbing, and Aparigraha, non-possession. Besides this, Shramana, that is, Jain monk, have to follow the principle of Brahmacharya, celibacy in Jainism. Five Great Doctrines First, Satya, Truth, Not to Speak Lie Second, Ahimsa, Non-Violence, Not to Kill Any Living Thing Third, Asteya, Non-Grabbing, Refrain from Violence and Stealing Fourth, Aparigraha, Non-Possession, Not to Collect Property 
Fifth, Brahmacharya, celibacy, to remain away from lust. Jainism is divided into two sects. Shvetambara, option Svetambara and Digambara. Jainism had acquired a great significance in Indian culture. Do you know this? There were 24 Tirthakars in Jain religion. They are as follows. First, Rishabdev. Second, Ajit. Third, Sambhav. Fourth, Abhinandan. Fifth, Sumati. Sixth, Padmabrab. Seventh, Suparshava. Eighth, Chandraprab. Ninth, Pushpadant. Tenth, Sheetal. Eleven, Shreyas. Twelfth, Vasupujya. Option, Twelfth, Vasupujya. Thirteenth, Vimal. Fourteenth, Anant. Fifteenth, Dharma. Sixteenth, Shanti. Seventeenth, Kunthu. Eighteenth, Araha. Nineteenth, Mali. Twentieth, Munisuvrat. Twenty-one, Nami. Twenty-second, Nemi. Twenty-third, Parshvanath. And twenty-fourth, Mahavir Vardhaman. Teaching of Jain Religion In addition to the principles of Parshvanath, Mahavir Vardhaman gave organized form to Jain religion. Mahavir advocated the pure and virtuous life. He insisted for charity, service for sorry, repeat. He insisted for charity, service of sages and elders, patience, truth and forgiveness. Mahavir always criticized caste system and opposed the authority of Vedas. He protested against the ritual and privileges of Brahmins in the society. He was in favor of man-women equality. Mahavir says, soul is self-existence and eternal. It should get salvation. Physical and psychological violence is unfair. He preached that the man can get victory over his evil inclination through self-restraint and self-agony, that is, sufferings. The principle of non-violence was the essence of Mahavir's philosophy. Ahimsa paramo dharm is the watchword of Jain religion. The philosophy of Jainism was presented in Ardhamagadi by Mahavir in order to propagate it on a larger scale among common people. Mahavir Vardhaman and the Jain Religion Mahavir Vardhaman was born at Kundagram near Vaishali in 599 BC in Kshatriya family. He was the son of Siddharth and Trishala Devi. At the age of 30, Vardhaman gave up the attachment of the worldly life. He conquered all his senses after the dire penance of 12 years. Therefore, he was called as Jinnah, the conqueror. He devoted his entire life for the propagation of Jainism. Mahavir Vardhaman passed away at the age of 72 at Pava in 527 BC. Buddhism Gautam Buddha and Buddhism Gautam Buddha was the founder of Buddhism. His real name was Siddharth. He was the son of King Shubhodana of Shakya Kingdom. Siddharth was born at Lumbini in 563 BC. After the mother's death, Prince Siddharth was brought up by his aunt Gautami. Therefore, he was known as Prince Gautam. The prince was provided necessary education. He got married to an accomplished princess, Yashodhara. But Prince Gautam never took interest and delight in sensuous pleasures 
and earthly life. Mahabhinishkraman Prince Gautam was always thoughtful about sorrows of human life. One day, while walking on the road in his state, the prince saw an old man, a funeral and a monk. When the prince understood the real truth of inevitable old age, illness, death and sorrow, he felt the need to find out the origin of all sufferings. Gautam renounced the family life for that. This is called as Mahabhinishkraman. Principles of Buddhism Buddha preached the principle of Buddhism and ways of conduct in Pali language in very simple and easy way. This information is given in the Tripatak, Vinaypitak, Suttapitak, Adhidhammapitak. Lord Buddha told four noble truths, Arya Satya, Eightfold Path and Panchashil. They are as follows. Four Arya Satyas Lord Buddha says, Human life is full of sorrows and sufferings. Therefore, he emphasized the need of controlling the lust or desire which is the main cause of all sorrows. First, Sorrows, Dukh. Human life suffers from illness, old age, repentance and death resulting into deep sorrow. Second, Lust, Trishna. Lust or desire is the main cause of all sorrows. Third, Refutation of Sorrow. One can put an end to these sufferings, that is, Dukh Nirod. Fourth, Pratipad. The way to achieve salvation is a good conduct. The Eightfold Path Lord Buddha gave a great importance to ethics and virtuousness. While explaining the Dhamma Chakra Pravartan at Sarnat, Lord Buddha told the Eightfold Path for achievement of salvation. First, Samyat Drishti, Right View. The man should interpret the world with rotational view. Second, Samyak Vichar, Right Thinking. The man should refrain himself from the vices like power, property, anger, desire, etc. Third, Samyak Bhashan, Right Speech. Our speech should be proper, we should not slander. Fourth, Samyak Kruti, Right Conduct. Our behavior must be right without thinking about its effects. Fifth, Samyak Upajivika, Right Living. The property should be collected for the sake of livelihood by proper means, without causing injury or injustice to others. Sixth, Samyak Vayam, Right Efforts. If bad thoughts come in our mind, we should suppress them by the way of exercise. Seventh, Samyak Smriti, Right Recollection We should recollect good memories by controlling our senses and with self-restriction. Eighth, Samyak Samadhi, Right Concentration We can attain salvation through meditation and contemplation to eliminate the tendency of mind towards bad deeds. Gautam Buddha's Eightfold Path highlights the principles of Shil, Character, Pradnya, Wisdom, and Samadhi, Meditation. These principles are the essence of Buddha's preaching. Shil, Character, conveys the aloofness from sin. Samadhi, Meditation, is the concentration of mind for virtuous things. And Pradnya, Wisdom, is the last phase on the way of emancipation. To observe the Eightfold Path, Lord Buddha has proclaimed the five rules. Panchashil First, Ahimsa, not to kill any living thing. Second, Satya, always speak the truth. Third, Asteya, not to steal. Fourth, Indriya Samyam, 
not to be unchaste. Fifth, not to consume intoxicants. Attainment of Spiritual Knowledge Prince Gautam deeply contemplated and sat for penance to get enlightenment. He obtained spiritual knowledge under the Bodhi, people tree at Gaya near the river Niranjana. It was a full moon day in the month of Vaishak. Prince Gautam was called as Buddha, a man who has real knowledge since that day. Buddha's Dhamma Chakra Pravartan, that is, promulgation. The enlightened Buddha gave his first sermon at Sarnath. He was joined by many disciples and followers who propagated Buddhism. Lord Buddha became the divine sage to lead the world towards salvation. He showed the way of emancipation from sorrow. Lord Buddha breathed his last at the age of 80 while preaching in 483 BC in Kushinagar.